here's a straightforward and practical approach to understanding and managing asthma. How can you tell if the patient you're seeing likely has asthma? Asthma is a clinical diagnosis, so taking a thorough history is important. Key symptoms include recurrent wheezing, shortness of breath, and cough. Unlike other chronic obstructive lung diseases, asthma has an intermittent pattern, often triggered by exercise, cold air, allergens, or respiratory infections. Importantly, it is a reversible condition. This means that symptoms can improve with treatment or even spontaneously. However, it typically requires long-term management for control. Asthma is an inflammatory disease characterized by bronchial hyperresponsiveness, bronchial inflammation, and endobronchial obstruction. There are two main types of asthma, allergic asthma and non-allergic asthma. Allergic asthma is the most common type, accounting for approximately 90% of asthma cases. Non-allergic asthma approximates about 10% of asthma cases. Allergic asthma, also known as atopic or extrinsic asthma, is often associated with conditions such as eczema and allergic rhinitis. How can you identify if a patient has allergic asthma? If a patient develops symptoms, such as wheezing, coughing, or shortness of breath after exposure to triggers like mold, dust, mites, pollen, or pet dander, it is likely that they have allergic asthma. Non-allergic asthma, also known as non-atopic or intrinsic asthma, is triggered by factors such as cold or dry air, smoke, exercise, viral infections, stress, anxiety, perfumes, and certain medications like beta blockers. The classic signs and symptoms of asthma include intermittent dyspnea, cough, and wheezing. These symptoms occur intermittently and are often triggered by factors such as allergens, infections, dust, fumes, and exercise. Asthma symptoms typically exhibit a diurnal variation with worsening in the evening and early morning. Viral respiratory infections like COVID are particularly potent triggers for many patients. A hallmark of asthma is the variability of symptoms characterized by periods of improvement and worsening over time, which is a key diagnostic feature of the condition. A pulmonary function test, also known as PFT, is a non-invasive diagnostic test used to assess lung function. It has three components, spirometry, lung volume testing, and diffusion capacity. Spirometry measures airflow and lung volumes, including force vital capacity and forced expiratory volume in one second. It is often used to diagnose obstructive or restrictive lung diseases. Lung volume testing assesses the total lung capacity to identify restrictive lung diseases. While diffusion capacity, DLCO, measures how well gases like oxygen pass from the lungs into the blood, useful for conditions like pulmonary fibrosis. It is acceptable to diagnose asthma clinically without objective data in certain situations. However, for exam purposes, objective findings are typically required. Spirometry is the gold standard test for diagnosing asthma. This involves performing spirometry in two steps during a single session. Pre-bronchodilator spirometry is conducted without albuterol, which is a bronchodilator and the post-bronchodilator spirometry is conducted after administering albuterol. The bronchodilator response is used to assess bronchial hyperresponsiveness, a key feature of asthma. Spirometry measures force exhaled or inhaled air. The most important volumes for interpretation are the force vital capacity, FVC, and force expiratory volume in one second, FEV1, a decreased an FEV1 over FVC ratio is used to define the presence of obstruction. A bronchodilator may be administered to assess responsiveness if an obstructive defect is present. An FEV1 over FVC ratio below normal range suggests obstructive lung disease. An increase in FEV1 of at least 10% or 200 ml from baseline 
after administration of a bronchodilator indicates a positive bronchodilator response, which supports a possible diagnosis of asthma. Also, an airway obstruction that improves after four weeks of anti-inflammatory treatment supports a diagnosis of asthma. A 21-year-old college student presents to the clinic with intermittent shortness of breath and wheezing occurring three to four times per week. He reports experiencing dyspnea during soccer or exercise. Additionally, he has intermittent non-productive nighttime coughing. He recalls having seasonal allergies during grade school. He is not currently taking any medications. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step? Monitor, intranasal steroid spray, as needed, steroid with formoterol, or daily LABA. The correct answer is C, as needed, steroid with formoterol. This patient exhibits symptoms consistent with exercise-induced bronchoconstriction, commonly referred to as exercise-induced asthma. In the absence of persistent asthma symptoms, the first-line treatment is the use of an as-needed low-dose steroid with formoterol, taken about 10 to 15 minutes before exercise to prevent symptoms. Here's a 28-year-old female with intermittent coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath for the past six months. The episodes occur most often at night and triggered by strong odors or exercise. She denies any history of smoking or other chronic medical conditions. Physical examination findings are normal, and spirometry performed during the visit are also unremarkable. What is the most appropriate next step to confirm the diagnosis? Chest x-ray, allergy testing, metacoline challenge test, peak expiratory flow monitoring, or inhaled corticosteroids? The correct answer is C, metacoline challenge test. This patient presents with symptoms suggestive of asthma, but her normal spirometry make the diagnosis unclear. A medical account challenge test is indicated when asthma is suspected, but baseline spirometry is normal. Metacoline is a bronchoconstrictor that induces airway hyperresponsiveness in patients with asthma. For some patients, airflow obstruction is not present during the initial evaluation, and demonstration of bronchial hyperreactivity with bronchial challenge testing is indicated. Metacoline is a cholinergic drug that induces bronchoconstriction, causing an asthma attack. It is helpful if the patient presents with typical asthma symptoms, but the spirometry is normal. It is able to assess the FAV1 over FBC ratio before and after inhaling doses of metacoline. If a bronchial challenge test is negative, it is unlikely that the patient has asthma. If there is a decrease in FEV1 over FVC of more than 20%, then it is a positive test. A positive metacoline challenge test confirms bronchial hyperreactivity, but it, it is not enough to confirm an asthma diagnosis. Therefore, clinical correlation of this finding with symptoms in other testing is needed. Here's a 35-year-old man with a six-month history of intermittent wheezing, coughing, and shortness of breath. Symptoms worsen during the week and improve on weekends and vacations. He works as a carpenter and reports frequent exposure to wood dust and chemical fuse. He doesn't smoke and denies any other significant past medical history. Physical examination findings are normal and the baseline spirometry is also normal. What do you think is the most appropriate next step in confirming the diagnosis? Medical and challenge test, perform spirometry after a work shift, referral to an allergist for testing, trial of inhaled corticosteroids, or order a chest x-ray. The correct answer is B, perform spirometry after a work shift. This patient has symptoms suggestive of occupational asthma, which is characterized by symptoms that are temporarily related to workplace exposure. Spirometry performed after a work shift can help confirm the diagnosis by demonstrating airflow obstruction, such as reduced FAV1 that is absent on spirometry, conducted away from the work environment. This test evaluates the physiological impact of workplace exposures. Here's a 40-year-old man with intermittent non-productive cough of at least one year. 
The cough is triggered by exposure to perfumes or weather changes. He denies any shortness of breath or wheezing, runny nose, post-nasal drip, or reflux. Chest x-ray, normal. Spirometry reveals normal FEV1 over FVC ratio. What do you think is the most likely diagnosis? COPD, GERD, or cough variant asthma? The correct answer is C, cough variant asthma. Cough variant asthma is a form of asthma in which chronic cough, defined as a cough of at least eight weeks, is the predominant symptom. Patients with cough variant asthma often have no other classic symptoms of asthma, such as wheezing or shortness of breath. It often worsens at night and with triggers, such as exercise or cold air. Normal baseline spirometry does not exclude the diagnosis, as asthma may only manifest with airway hyperresponsiveness. A medical and challenge test is typically used to confirm the diagnosis if suspected. Here's a 40-year-old woman with a two-year history of nasal congestion, episodic wheezing, and shortness of breath. The symptoms have worsened over the past few months. Recently, she was treated for recurrent nasal polyps. She also reports that her breathing becomes significantly worse whenever she takes ibuprofen for headaches. She denies any smoking or other chronic medical conditions. Physical examination reveals bilateral nasal polyps and expiratory wheezing. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? A. Chronic sinusitis B. Aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease C. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis or D. COPD The correct answer is B. Aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease Aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease, or short AERD, is a syndrome characterized by the triad of asthma, chronic sinusitis with nasal polyps, and respiratory reactions to aspirin or other NSAIDs. The patient's worsening symptoms after taking ibuprofen strongly suggests this condition. AERD results from dysregulation of arachidonic acid metabolism, leading to overproduction of leukotrienes. Management includes leukotriene receptor antagonists and avoidance of NSAIDs. The major components of asthma management include selection of initial therapy, assessment of asthma control and risk of exacerbations, and adjusting therapy based on a stepwise approach. There are many assessments available to assess both asthma symptoms and risk for exacerbations. The GINA assessment is probably the easiest to implement with just four questions relevant to the past four weeks. Have you had daytime symptoms more than twice in one week? Have you had any night awakening due to asthma? Have you needed short-acting beta agonists such as albuterol, rescue inhaler, more than twice in a week? And have you had any activity limitation due to asthma? According to GINA 2024 guidelines, patients with mild asthma symptoms typically fall under steps 1 and 2, where the recommended treatment is as-needed low-dose corticosteroid with formoterol. An asthma symptoms becomes more frequent or severe, the treatment progresses to a low-dose maintenance inhaled corticosteroid with formoterol, followed by a medium-dose maintenance inhaled corticosteroid with formoterol. For patients whose symptoms remain uncontrolled, a LAMA may be added or a high-dose maintenance inhaled corticosteroid with formoterol can be considered. According to GINA 2024 guidelines, instead of using a short-acting bronchodilator like albuterol, an inhaled corticosteroid with formoterol inhaler is recommended as the reliever because it reduces the risk of exacerbations more effectively than a SABA reliever. Inhaled LABAS provides sustained airway dilation with just once or twice daily dosings, are an important tool for asthma treatment, and when added to inhaled glucocorticoid, they provide improved control and decreased risk for exacerbation. For patients who have symptoms less than four to five days per week, start with as-needed low-dose corticosteroid with a LAMA, such as predestinide plus formoterol. For patients with more severe asthma symptoms most days of the week or whose asthma is waking them from sleep one or more times weekly, then you can start with step three therapy, 
which is maintenance and as needed low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus lava, such as pedesinide plus from Motorol. Consider step four therapy if the patient has daily symptoms or waking with symptoms at least once per week. Start with maintenance medium dose inhaled corticosteroid plus lava, such as pedesinide plus from Motorol plus as needed low dose inhaled corticosteroids with lava. For patients whose asthma is not adequately controlled by a low or medium strength inhaled glucocorticoid plus LABA, consider adding LAMA. LAMA provides sustained airway dilation, and theotropium has been shown to improve lung function and reduce exacerbations when added to therapy in patients not controlled with inhaled glucocorticoid with LABA combination therapy. At this time, the patient has severe uncontrolled asthma, and we should start checking a cinephil counts, order another pulmonary function test, and even consider biologic therapy. Leukotriene receptor antagonists provide modest bronchodilation and are particularly effective in managing upper airway conditions such as allergic rhinitis. Additionally, these agents are often highly beneficial for patients with aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease offering targeted relief for this specific condition. Leukotriene pathway modifiers such as Xyluton can be a good option for patients with exercise-induced asthma or aspirin-induced asthma. Keep in mind that mast cell stabilizers and theophylline are no longer recommended as part of asthma management. Thank you, and this ends my talk on my approach to asthma diagnosis and management.